Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. And the verse for today is, As we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And now we will listen to this beautiful gospel song. I'm really blessed by the songs that we hear. It helps us to deepen our worship and our fellowship. Glorify Glorify thy name. Glorify the
As we glorify the name of our Lord from here to the nations, we hope and we pray that the Bible Namaste. Message, My name is Prabhu. That I'm the co-founder of the Good Talk. If you found this ad and you're not interested, helps us to release us from all tensions, all anxieties, and look forward to an everlasting life. With you, Gita, may God be with you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we have one desire, Lord, to glorify your name, Lord, with every breath that you give us, Lord. Our desires, Lord, to lift you high, Lord, the greatest name of all, Lord. Lord, truly, Lord, we want to glorify your name each day, Lord, even as you're with us, Lord. We want to lift your name higher and higher, Lord, in our lives, Lord. The very purpose that you have given us, Lord, in this life is to lift you high, Lord, to know you, to walk with you, to have fellowship with you, to love you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for this time in your presence, Lord. Give us listening ears, Lord, ears that would comprehend, Lord God, whatever you speak to to us, Lord. Lord, give us spiritual eyes, Lord, that we would see, Lord, you're working in our lives, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank you, Lord. Anoint us afresh, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, the Lord has given us an opportunity to come before him and seek his face to know him. And just like the, uh, this song we sang together, glorify your name, Lord. Spirit, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Father, we love you. We want to glorify. Let it be our passionate desire on this earth, the very purpose of our living, to glorify the, the name of the Lord through our lives. Amen. And even as we uh, saw last time, the Lord, you know, uh, we are told in uh, Luke chapter 8, yeah, Luke chapter 8, uh, we are told that the Lord, uh, you know, enters into the boat and tells his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. And we saw uh, last time, the Lord had a mission. For each one of us, the Lord has a great desire, a desire that we would be delivered. The, the Lord desires that we would walk in freedom. That the Lord desires that we walk uh, would walk in love. You know, daily seeking after Him and you know, uh, eating of the manna. He says, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God." So the Lord's desire and His passion is that we would grow into maturity. We would not just be babes. You know drinking milk. You know? We begin in that way. An infant drinks milk and grows. You know, and we got to grow into maturity. Whereby the word of God says that we should, you know, grow from day to day in his likeness and then come to maturity where we eat solid food, you know, meat. Meaning an adult does not depend upon milk like an infant. But as he grows, he eats solid food, strong food that strengthens him. So in the same way, we ought to strengthen, be strengthened by the word of God in our spirit, in our inner man, in our soul, that we would walk faithfully before the Lord seeking him. So here was Jesus 
you know, he gets into the boat with this one mission to go across to the other side because he had, uh, you know, someone in his mind, you know, whom he wanted to heal. And that someone we see was a demon possessed person. And, you know, uh, like we would think that while Jesus was in that boat with his disciples, there was a great storm that came. And it could be that, you know, Satan tried to prevent Jesus from doing his mission. But uh, God cannot be prevented. You no, know? you and I also cannot be prevented when the Lord has a plan and a purpose in our lives. No matter what the enemy tries to do, the Lord will see us through. So here was Jesus, and we know that, you know, when the winds and the waves came, uh, came up raging, you know, and the disciples started, you know, calling out to the Lord who was fast asleep. He said, Lord, help us, we are perishing. And Jesus stilled the storm. So we know that whatever be our situation, however mixed up, however complex, you know, our lives are, however complex our problems are, the Lord speaks one word, but we need to seek him in faith, you know, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's what we learn from God's word. It is not our crying and I'm saying, Lord, oh, you know, I'm going through a very difficult time, Lord, you know, and start moaning about the difficulty. He says, ask. So the Lord encourages us to ask him. And when he spoke that one word, you know, the storm was quietened. You know, so our mess, the Lord can uh, bring, you know, a quiet and a, a peace into our mess. Sometimes we may not see God working in our situation. We may think, oh, he's going from bad to worse. But we confirm that if you if you trust in the Lord, all things work together for good, just like uh, Dr. Teresa read the Opening verse, all things, in Romans 8.28 says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we have a purposeful life, a, a purpose-driven life to know the Lord, to walk with him, love him, and be obedient to his voice. Okay, while we are going through this journey, we should not forget that our focus should be the Lord. Yeah, and as we focus on the Lord, we will see things settle. And, and we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes we, we may see, you know, troubling situations. They say, Lord, where are you? But the Lord says, I'm there. I'm with you. Do not fear. I am there with you. I will take you by the hand. I will help you through. Okay. And then we, then we see that when uh, the Lord goes to the other side, and the Lord is asking them, where's your faith? He's asking the disciples, where's your faith? So the Lord desires that we would grow in faith. We would be mature, you know, mature in faith. Maturity is something which we are called to as we walk this narrow path. You know, the Lord wants us to be mature in his word. How do we be mature? By spending time with him, by listening to his voice. When there, you know, when a situation is such that uh, we have conflicting uh, options, but we will choose that which pleases the Lord. We'll do everything to please the Lord. We will keep our garments. You know, we will not allow our garments to be stained. And then we see how the Lord comes to this place where the man is so very, uh, you know, uh, full of demons. We, we, we know last time we saw the 2,000 demons, a legion of demons this man was troubled with. And, you know, uh, this is concerning a, a demon possession. But whatever be our situation, the Lord's one word, like he stilled the storm, he came and he spoke, you know, to this demon possessed person, you know, who was filled with a legion of demons. And the demons were saying, why have you come here to trouble us before, before our time? Don't send us into the abyss. Don't send us to that place of, you know, darkness. We don't want to go there. But sent us into these swine. And Jesus listened to the voice, uh, to, the, uh, to the demon asking for that. And finally, the, the demons ran out of this man with God's one word. And the, and the you know, swine 
went running down helplessly down the cliff into that lake and they got drowned. We go further and we see here, now uh, we are told here, now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them and he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man, entered the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and ground. And when those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it to the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to see Jesus and found the man from whom the demon, demons had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in a right and in his right mind. What the Lord has done, this, this man who was walking around naked, who was living among tombs, who was cutting himself and even the strongest uh, chains could not hold him in place. He used to break them off very easily because he had a high power demon possession. But with Jesus' one word, that's what Jesus, you know, he's the creator of all things. And he says, come unto me, all in that labor and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's what this man received, the rest from God, the living God, you know, with one word, gave him that right mind, the mind which is so possessed. He's now sitting at the feet of Jesus. That's the place that the Lord wants us to be, you know. Being at the feet of Jesus means... You know, meditating on his grace, meditating on his love, spending time. It's not only when we come together like this, but daily spending time in his presence with his word. You know, sometimes we may not understand the word of God, but we can ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and give us revelation of what he's trying to tell us. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit is, is called to be our helper. So these people, you know, who were tending the, you know, the swine, they went into the country and called those people, you know, the, the owners or whoever. And they came to Jesus and they saw this man was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And they recognized this man because he would have been a terror to all of them. They would have been passing that place and with fear they would have been, you know, seeing this man in this uh, terrible demonic condition. And here this man is seated in a right mind and he's seated at the feet of Jesus. And we are told they, are, they were afraid. They also who had seen it told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed. That the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Gedares asked him to depart from them for they were seized with great fear and he got into the boat and returned. So you can well imagine people those people were so very upset that Jesus, you know, there was a loss of uh, those swine, but they were not concerned about the soul. They were more concerned about their wealth rather than this helpless soul who was delivered. They were not happy. They saw the man there, but there was a loss that they suffered. Probably it was a very prosperous uh, uh, city. And people feared. Why they feared? They thought maybe if Jesus... Uh, remains here for a longer time, probably we'll all lose our stuff. So, you know, we can be concentrating on the wealth, on our wealth rather than on souls. So the, the Lord is giving us, the word is God is telling us how important it is, it is for us to focus on eternal things, on souls rather than, you know, we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God and mammon. Here was this, was the city, probably very prosperous financially, but they didn't want Jesus. What is the use? What does it profit a man? That's what the word of God. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but loses his soul? But there was one man who was very concerned and he wanted Jesus to stay. It was, the same man who was demon possessed now delivered. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. 
So this man was pleading with Jesus, don't go away. You scream here. I've received, I've seen your power. I've seen your glory. I've seen my life being transformed. I'm changed. No longer I'm suffering those, uh, that demon possession. Why don't you stay? While the rest of the city wanted him to leave and Jesus was leaving the city. And Jesus tells us something very important, which you and I can learn. He says, go and tell your family. Go and tell your friends what God has done. So we ought to be vessels that, you know, whenever we get an opportunity, we declare the love of God. What the Lord has done in our lives. Maybe, you know, you, you may not have had such a spectacular thing like this man. But whatever the Lord has done in our lives. We can speak it out to others so that others know that there's a true and living God who loves them as well. And if they repent and they turn to him, they will be saved. So that was the instruction uh, the Lord had given this man. Go and tell your family. Go and tell your friends what the Lord has done. The Lord has done such great things. And we know the greatest thing that we have experienced is our salvation. We can share this message. Uh, some people, like I said some, some time back, some people are only interested in their salvation. They are not interested to make Jesus as Lord of their lives. It's very important that we, you know, walk with Jesus and make him Lord, not just receive him as a Savior and sit tight and receive the blessings and, you know, not make him Lord of our lives. It's very important that we listen to him, you know, at every a stage of life, whatever we face, uh, let our desire be always to please the Lord. And, and then we are told here, and this man who was demon possessed, he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for, for him. So this is what the Lord is expecting. We, having received Jesus, we are going to be, we are going to be silent and not speak it out. We are very selfish. Then we get an opportunity let us not lose any opportunity. We end here. We don't. We should not lose any opportunity to, you know, present the gospel. See, we are not converting people. We are just presenting what God has done. If that person receives or does not receive, is that person's, you know, a matter of choice. But we, we ought to do our part of speaking the word of God. You know, and telling the good news. The God of heaven and earth came down for each one of us. He died on the cross because we are all sinners and he can deliver us. He can set us free uh, in our spirit, in our soul, in our body, in every situation that we face. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for every encounter, Lord, that we see in your word, Lord. We know, Lord God, Though you're not physically with us, Lord, we know that, Lord, um, your presence is there. We may not be able to see you, Lord, but we know as your word says, behold, I'm with you always. We just believe that word and trust in you, Lord, because you are our God. We are the sheep of your pasture, Lord. And just like uh, you still the storm, Lord, and you delivered this man who was demon-possessed, we know that every situation in our lives, we have the hope, Lord, that you are the one who is making a way even in situations where there is, Lord, where there's difficulty and problems, Lord. We just want to thank you and praise you for this time in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Over to you, Dr. Teresa. It is so wonderful to know that you spoke about how uh, Jesus was, uh, you know, casting out and he could cast out 2,000 demons. But he also gave the disciples, you know, when he called them two by two and he gave them the authority that they can also go forth and, uh, you know, uh, help demon-possessed people. And at the same time, he could go, they could go out and pray for the sick and anoint them with oil and I think this is the best time for us to do something like that to just go out and when you said it is very encouraging that we must go out and do what we are told to do because that is what the spirit wants us to do it is wanting us to get out of our comfort zone 
to make somebody else comfortable yes. and that is the reason why we are chosen that's what i really like about you know how he is empowering each one of us with every word to become stronger and stronger every day i definitely have a Amen. very good testimony to share but i'd like either priyanka or uh, davanti to share something from the word of god how has the week been for you let priyanka share Priyanka, yeah, you... Priyanka, my week was wonderful. Praise the Lord. Devanti? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, this week I was like, um, for so many years I was just reading New Testament, New Testament. You know, uh, all the eyewitnesses I was reading. Uh, I was very much interested in all the eyewitness, what Jesus did, the miracles, the teachings, and uh, and the uh, you know where uh, the faith thing. I'll I'll just talk about the faith thing. There was a disciple with leg, okay, and the two by two mission was on, and uh, he said that. Uh, why you can't heal me? <laughs> Healing entire world. Why can't? But I just wanted to not heal. Still, you have to believe that you will be healed. And uh, that disciple, you uh, know, he was always uh, worried that why Jesus is not healing. Jesus told him that I'm not going to heal you. I mean, you will be healed. But you should tell people that, see, I'm even I'm not uh, getting out of it, but I have faith that one day God is going to do miracle on me also. So go, uh, you go and change people's life, but you will be healed at the time when I will, you know, I will grant. But okay. Work is not it results, but you feel that you are buried somewhere. You know, you are buried, but actually God has planted you and you just feel nothing is happening. You're buried. Uh, God doesn't, uh, you know, say that he, you know, nothing is working. You're just planted there and you will flourish. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Old Testament. I was now the last week, all before Christ, till the law of Moses, I was, you know, yes, whatever the old, uh, what do you say? Old Testament. Mm, old Testament. And the, I think our network is uh, lost. Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you for sharing because by faith, no, one of the disciples killed. Mm-hmm. Huh? It is written by faith, you are healed. Your network. Like, uh, uh, there was old law, and then Jesus came and came up. Came Since your yes. network is uh, not uh, going good, I'd like to give this time also to uh, Devanti. Yes, Devanti, would you like to share? Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I praise hope I'm Lord. audible. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm not uh, like uh, sharing it from the word, actually. Uh, but I would encourage, you know, like I want each one of us along with me, myself, uh, to be encouraged, you know. We have been listening to the word for years, for months, maybe for weeks or for days. But what 
we need to do is uh, today the need of the hour is apply the word in our life in our family you know when we are actually just listening it's it, it's it's not it's not fruitful it's not like that buried seed you know it's just on the on the surface but when we start uh, applying it it actually uh, starts we are actually you know like that seed who is properly buried in the soil and ready you know to be fruitful you know ready to be you know uh, bring forth what the produce has to be so that happens only when we apply the word of god even if it is one word like for example i uh, uh, recently i was just um, pondering on the word of god in isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 says that the lord himself will teach your children and great will be their peace Amen. i started i started confessing that word for my children for christina for joanna for emmanuel i saw the toughest battles with that but then after a period of time you know when my soul my spirit had actually you know uh, uh, accepted that this is the word of god and besides this there is nothing which is going to work only the word yes. of god will work not the situation not the facts not the reality and literally i saw things working in one of my child in such an amazing manner that i was so thrilled by the word of god i was really thrilled and then you know the holy spirit reminded me this happened when the word was applied you you heard it several times but literal application of the word brought forth that fruit that produce which was required and i'm just encouraging each one of us we all are in the same you know um, season of being fruitful because we are in the midst of you know the word of god we are in the midst of people who are praying we are in the midst this is our greatest privilege this is our greatest a uh, favor that god has given into our life that we have the word of god we are not dry lands we are not we are not lame and we are not spiritually lame and spiritually blind and spiritually deaf but today we are you know whole by the sacrifice that jesus paid for us and application of word is going to bring bountiful produce into our lives and even through our lives to everybody who connects with us all glory to god thank you for this opportunity amen love you, love actually you. i just like uh, also just like the lord said no uh, we ought to be not just listeners but doers of god's word so application is very very important we can be listening and listening and listening all our life but to apply it in the in our lives is very very important it's like that man who built you know the wise man you know we have studied uh, uh, just uh, two three weeks earlier he built his house on the rock you know such a person is one who just doesn't hear but does the word of god that's what jesus gave that you know parable you know for those who listen to god's word and do it not just listen but do the word of god amen yeah that's very 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 important for all of us there's another verse that i'd like to share which is again from the book of romans because uh, it reflects to uh, how uh, like the vanti says you know the struggle of the mother you know when we have children there's so much of you know uh, expectation that it is always expected that you know a mother should be like you know the super woman and the wonder woman and you know mothers can do everything and children have such great expectations that they you know begin to ask and think that they can get everything that they you know want so this is uh, i like to read from uh, the romans chapter uh, 8 verse 18 i consider that our present suffering is not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us for the creation awaits in eager expectation for the children of god to be revealed 
See, isn't that something very nice for all the mothers? For the creation awaits in greater expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who is subjected to it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. We know the whole creation has been groaning. Like you said, Gita, we have been groaning. But even in the present day, we are groaning as in the pains of childbirth right from the present, right up to the present time. Not only so, but ourselves who have the first fruit of the Spirit grown inwardly as we eagerly await for the adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But we hope for what we do not have, but we wait for it patiently. And I was listening to Benny and, you know, talking about his struggle. Imagine pastors of such great, uh, you know, name, fame. And, you know, when things can go wrong in their life, everything goes wrong. But he said, I kept quiet for the sake of my children. Today his children are successful. And I do believe that when our life is going into a controversy, Jesus was the first one to being seeded into the life of controversy. Now, so leading a Christian life, we are more than a conqueror. It's what the world thinks of controversy as controversy, but for us, this is our time to say that we are not the tail, we are the head and we are conquerors. We are never going to bow down to whatever the demons want. There is no fear, there is no authority, there is nothing that, you know, we should ever be worried about. And I really like to thank God for this one moment, even if it is one more minute, that we can thank God and we can come back again and fellowship in the next meeting when we restart, rekindle as to what is, you know, stopping us from taking this word forward. So join us back again in the fellowship meeting. Let's see how we can encourage each and every one because I want to share my testimony with you and I know it's going to be good. Praise God. Okay, we reconnect then. Okay, we leave and reconnect. Yes. Restart. Yes. Okay.